We're back. We continue right here with the Island Contracting Nightly Sports Call on the Borders and Borders Hotline. Bob Pompey ending with you until 11 o'clock tonight. By the way, our number one Cochrane Sports Showdown will be on after the Grammys and after our late news, so roughly a 12.05 start for that one. And we have a lot of spirited, entertaining debate on that show. Join us. Andrew Filipponi is there. Tim Benz, Chris Mack. We'll get into designated hitter. Do you like it or not? Is it destined for the National League? And would you have a problem with it? I'll take some of your calls on that topic as well. I don't like that situation where they're talking about if you come into a game as a pitcher, you have to face a minimum of three batters. I think that takes away from strategy. I don't like that one at all. We'll get into that. The Pirates, by the way, begin this week. Rich Walsh for KDK TV will be down there beginning his reports on Wednesday at Pirate City as the Pirates begin to try to put together a team that can finish higher than fourth, which they've ended the last two years. But this is probably the most competitive division there is in baseball. The Central Division. It will be hard for them to do it unless they get absolute terrific career kind of seasons out of a lot of their offensive guys that they are relying on. If not, they got good pitching, but you got to get some some production at the plate to take some of the pressure off that pitching as well. We'll get into that. We'll also talk about, uh, as I said, the trade deadline with the Penguins and Le'Veon Bell. I mentioned this transition tag. Uh, the Steelers have not ruled it out, so you wonder what that means. You know, as it is right now, if you just let him go and don't do another thing, you'll get a third round compensatory pick. Uh, so that's not so bad. They may want more. They may decide to do it uh, potentially, and I don't know this to be the case, but I'm just throwing it out there, that they would let a team negotiate for them. In other words, if the Steelers offer a transition tag, uh, that means they have the right to match any offer he gets as a free agent. So let's say he goes out and gets an offer, and they like the terms of that offer. They may say, fine, we'll match it. Some people believe you could trade then, make a deal with that team. I don't think that's uh, allowable under the current CBA. So the choice is, do you really want him back or don't you? Are you willing to take a third-round pick or do you think you need more? And can you facilitate a, a, a trade without violating a terms of the CBA? So it's a very difficult situation to answer right now. I know a lot of people would just say, move on without him, as they would Antonio Brown. But if you don't get a lot in return, they may have different thoughts. Call us with your thoughts on this. Ron in Pittsburgh. Go ahead, Ron. How are you? Good. How are you? Hey, right. I call. Okay. Can you hear me? Sure. Yes. Okay. Uh, first, I called about Antonio Brown. I wanted to say I detected as far back as training camp, I thought he had some domestic issues in his personal life that may have affected things. It's no excuse for his, his activities. But if you could, if you are aware of any of that, or I don't want to talk about rumors, but I, I think no, I, I'd I, have had a pick. Now, let me also, just because you brought up uh, uh, Le'Veon Bell, mm -hmm. Steelers should absolutely do the transition. They should absolutely extract whatever they can. And once they sign him, they can trade him to someone yep. other than the team that made the offer. And I think they would find people. Yeah, but if a lot of people don't want to make the offer, they may, may, they may have a very limited field of people who may want him. Uh, I just think there's a lot, of, lot to go through here for this. You don't even know if his heart's in it the way he acted last year. He didn't want to play at all, and he said it was a financial thing. Fine, but maybe, maybe he's not uh, totally 100% into football. I don't know the answer to that. He hasn't said a word. He hasn't been around. We haven't had a chance to talk to him, nor would he probably want to talk to us. So we'll see what happens, but they haven't ruled it out. Um, meantime, let's go to line two. That's Don in Midland. Hey, Don, what's up? Hey, uh my man, you know what? I'm talking about the defensive coordinator, Kevin Butler, okay? Kevin Keith, Butler Keith. messed up a few games Keith. with the Pittsburgh Steelers being a defensive coordinator. I think the Pittsburgh Steelers ought to look in to Marvin Lewis. Marvin Lewis was a defensive coordinator there, for, I understand for that, but they're not Ravens. And I really think he's a good defensive coordinator, and I think they need a new one. Pick Marvin Lewis. Okay. First of all, it's Keith. Second of all, it's not happening. Keith is the defensive coordinator. Tomlin has said that. He's given him another assignment as outside linebacker coach. 412-575-2600 is the number. Let's go to Mike in Pittsburgh. Hey, Mike. Hey, hey Bob. Do you, do you believe that the new leagues are going to make it, or they're going to be like the XFL and only make it a season and be over well, I think they have some pretty good ideas. You know, I don't know how, how many people are starved for football in February, March, and April. And I guarantee you this, if there's more compelling sports uh, going on, I don't think people are going to choose the Alliance League. However, you know, they, they have done some interesting stuff. Uh, I like some of their rules. Some of them I don't. But I think they'll, um, 
they'll put some pressure on the NFL to adopt some of the things they're using in their games, like live microphones. I don't know if the NFL will ever do that. They show the replay guy as he's going through the replay live, you know, and gets his thoughts about what he's talking about, what he's seeing. People like this. I don't know if the NFL will like it, but uh, I don't know. I mean, to me, you're, this is a star-driven thing. The only way you're going to sell this league, just like the XFL, is stars. You have name recognition that's very important when you don't have a lot of depth and, and, and quality of, of play. Uh, your quarterbacks have to be not only name recognizable, but they have to be good. We saw today Christian Hackenberg. Everybody knows him around here. As I said, he went 10 of 23, 87 yards, and was benched. And what happens when one of the starting line uh, you know, quarterbacks gets injured? Who's behind that? The offense was really bad today and most of yesterday. It's a tough sell. I think there was a curiosity factor going on, which made a pretty good rating yesterday. I'd be hard-pressed to see that rating continue as time goes on. Go to line five, Pete in Squirrel Hill. Hey, Pete, welcome to the sports call. Hey, Bob, how are you tonight? I'm uh, fine, thank well, you. Well, being as like, you know, the topic of the day, mostly should be tough power talk with that coming up. A question, who has the defining moment, Bob, in drafting with the Steelers? Is that a, is that a dull thing between, like, you know, the manager and the GM? The reason I'm asking that is, whose idea was it specifically, Bob, to pass on Mike Trout in the draft? Now, we know that a bunch of teams passed on him, mm -hmm. but it's common knowledge they did because he played only six months a year from New Jersey. I heard from a very reliable source within the Pirates organization they chose not to draft Mike Trout. They didn't want to damage McCutcheon's ego. Bob, he's universally I don't the know greatest if that's true player or false. of his generation at this point. I know, but you're right. A lot of people did pass on him, Pete. I don't, know the, I don't know who makes the final call there. They don't tell you. They don't invite you in. So my guess would be... It's a committee approach, just as the Steelers had the same thing. Again, don't know for sure because we haven't been shown the opportunity to discuss it. They won't talk about it. So uh, and that was a mistake. There's no question about that. But they weren't the only teams. But you're right. A, a generation talent like that, when you have them and you pass on them, uh, that's not one that you can uh, you know, quickly just forget about. And I don't think they have if they did that. Let's go to line three. That's Rich in Altoona. Hey, Rich, how you doing tonight? Hey, Bob. Uh, um, first of all, I'm talking to you with pneumonia, so if I cough out, I cough well, out. I I've been doing that a lot on the air, too. I apologize <laughs> when I did it, so that's no problem. Hope you get well. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, gold, penguins, goaltending, and they're too slow anymore. Second, the AAF isn't going to make it. Well, let's talk about the Pirates, Bob. Lonnie Chisholm Hall they signed, and today Melky Cabrera. They traded away McCutcheon, said he was 31 years old, didn't want to pay him the money. Now we had a 34-year-old outfielder. Plus, they signed Liriano back last week and Jordan Lyles. What happens to Mitch Keller in all this? When are they going to stop suppressing our young guys and bring them up to the major league roster to get younger and better? Melky Cabrera, are they really serious? I guess they are. Plus, he's a PED guy over the years, 50-game yeah. suspension. Uh, I, you know, listen, Andrew McCutcheon, they didn't want to pay a future contract. He got a nice deal from Philadelphia. He still can play. I don't think there's yeah. any question he can play. He's, he's better than what they have in Chisholm Hall and Melky Cabrera. They just didn't want to get involved in the contract. Now, having said that, I like Chisholm Hall. I think he's a, a player who will fit in as a role player, not necessarily a starter. That's what he's going to do until Polanco gets back. But these other guys are just trying to catch lightning in a bottle, quite frankly. And you're talking about... Uh, you know, Mitch Keller's not ready yet, from what I understand. He may be as this season progresses, but I don't think that's a, a position they need to rush anyway. They have a pretty good starting staff. There's one opening there, basically, and they hope Nick Kingham could be the guy who does that. But, you know, so I'm not so worried about that. Position players, it's a whole other story. When, you know, they're still looking for a starting shortstop. Adam Frazier at second. I like Adam Frazier, but I don't know about every day. Can Bell get more than 12 home runs you know he had 26 the year before he needs they need everyone in those positions to have career years they need gung slash moran they need bell they need whoever's at shortstop they need the second base they need production from catcher they need to get it all because uh i don't know where they're going to get power now having said that you don't necessarily have to have home runs to produce power you need doubles and triples and they were pretty good in those categories last year we got to take a break 412-575-2600 is the number to call we'll take more of your calls next right here live on pittsburgh cw